Nursery Rhymes, A Secret History, Part 1 Presented by Monash Public Library Service As we shall discover, many of the nursery rhymes that we have read to our children or grandchildren have their origins in British history, with references to murder and persecution, betrayal, greed, tyrants and especially to royalty. Charles Perrault's publication was to mark the first authenticated starting point for the Mother Goose stories. The words in an old rhyme such as this could be interpreted to find a darker meaning to the original identity of Mother Goose. The term Mother Goose is likely to have originated from the 1600s onwards at a time of great witch hunts. Comparisons between Mother Goose and the popular image of a witch came to be made during this era. London Bridge is falling down. Our first nursery rhyme is based on one of the most famous landmarks in London, with history traced back to the Roman occupation. The first bridge was made of wood and clay, and was fortified or rebuilt with various materials mentioned in the rhyme itself such as bricks and mortar, then later iron and steel. In the 1300s, the bridge contained 140 shops, and the references to silver and gold relate to the trading which was conducted on the bridge. Many disasters struck the bridge, including Viking invasions and a number of fires. London Bridge survived the Great Fire of 1666, but its arches and foundations were severely weakened. Several attempts have been made to identify the fair lady of the rhyme. They include Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Matilda of Scotland, who is consort to King Henry I, Eleanor of Provence, 1223-91, to consort of Henry III, who had custody of the bridge revenues from 1269 to about 1281, a member of the Lee family of Stoneley Park in Warwickshire, even the River Lee, a tributary of the Thames, is a possible contender. Three Blind Mice Who knew they were describing church history when as children they sang this rhyme? When Queen Mary I of England ascended the throne in 1553, few people would have known that within five years Hundreds of Protestant sympathisers would be burnt at the stake, the Queen would become known as Bloody Mary, and the nursery rhyme Three Blind Mice would be written. Queen Mary's devotion lay with the Catholic Church of Rome, and her five years in charge would be spent reversing the Protestant Church reforms of both her father, King Henry VIII, and her half-brother, Edward VI. The highest profile executions that Mary ordered were those she organised in the university town of Oxford. Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Ridley and Thomas Cranmer were Anglican archbishops who were executed for their support of England's Reformation. This woodcut depicts the joint executions of Latimer and Ridley. Cranmer was told that he would be able to make a final recantation. Yet he ended his sermon totally unexpectedly, deviating from the prepared script. He renounced the recantations that he'd written or signed with his own hand since his degradation, and as such he stated his hand would be punished by being burnt first. He then said, And as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy and Antichrist with all his false doctrine. Pulled from the pulpit and taken to where Latimer and Ridley had been burnt six months before, he fulfilled his promise by placing his right hand into the heart of the fire while saying, That unworthy hand. His dying words were, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. The garden in this rhyme refers not to a lovely England cottage overcome with bloom, but rather to the cemeteries that were becoming increasingly full of Mary's victims. The silver bells and cockle shells refer to her favoured instruments of torture. 
the former silver bells being thumb screws and the latter cockle shells being screws that are placed on certain parts of the male anatomy. Finally, the maids all in a row is a shorthand reference to the guillotine nicknamed the maiden, which Mary didn't mind at all using on her enemies. Jack and Jill There are those who believe that the names Jack and Jill refer to King Louis the Sixteenth of France, who was beheaded in 1793, as the rhyme says, fell down and broke his crown, followed by the beheading of his wife Queen Marie Antoinette, who came tumbling after. However, the printing of the rhyme predates these events and lays doubts to the claim. Catherine L. Was Thomas wrote a book called The Real Personages of Mother Goose. She points out that the original woodcut illustration in Mother Goose's melody actually represents Jack and Jill not as a boy and girl, but as two boys. Jack and Jill may also date back to Tudor times as a secret insult to Cardinal Wolsey, Jack, and Bishop Tarbus, Jill. The two famously went on a trip to France, as the rhyme says, went up the hill, to secure the marriage of Mary Tudor, who was the younger sister of Henry VIII, to the aging 53-year-old King of France, Louis XII. This plan was hatched by Cardinal Wolsey in order to secure peace with France and also to appease Henry VIII, who saw his sister as a useful tool in his European alliances. The wedding went ahead, but sadly, the ailing Louis XII died within three months of the marriage, apparently due to his exertions in the bedchamber, leaving the young Mary a widow. Mary had already fallen in love with Charles Brandon, the Duke of Suffolk. Despite Henry VIII's desire to use his sister as a further negotiating tool for another alliance, Mary and Brandon were married in secret. The enraged Henry wanted to execute Brandon for treason. However, Wolsey intervened and secured a pardon. Until then, Wolsey was the most powerful man in the British Kingdom as Henry VIII's trusted aide and Lord Chancellor. Yet the intervention to secure Brandon's pardon and the subsequent fallout with the king is hinted at in the rhyme as Jack fell down and broke his crown as he fell out of favour with the temperamental monarch. Ring Around the Rosie This rhyme has often been associated with either the Great Plague of 1665 in England or the earlier outbreaks of the Black Death. Leading authorities on nursery rhymes have remarked that the invariable sneezing and falling down in modern English versions have given would-be origin finders the opportunity to say that the rhyme dates back to the Great Plague. A rosy rash, they allege, was a symptom of the plague and posies of herbs were carried as protection and also to ward off the smell of the disease. Sneezing or coughing was a final fatal symptom and all fall down was exactly what happened. The line ashes ashes in colonial versions of the rhyme is claimed to refer to the cremation of bodies. The image on this slide depicts a plague doctor. Medieval physicians were expected to care for people with the plague. All the body is completely covered from head to foot, including the face. The mask features a long beak laced with oil that would have acted as some protection against the disease. The outfits were completed with amulets of dried blood and ground up toads were worn around their waists. Such outfits would have been extremely effective in preventing the doctor from being bitten by fleas, which although not known at the time were what actually spread the plague. Bar Bar Black Sheep The 18th century was a time when Britain was trading slaves to its colonies. But most scholars believe that Bar Bar Black Sheep is not a reference to slavery. The British were not necessarily using these slaves to work farmland in the way we traditionally associate with slavery in the United States. It would also have been uncommon for slaves in the United Kingdom to be handling wool at that time. Experts believe Bar Bar Black Sheep 
dates back further in British history to medieval times and something called the Great Custom. In this era, the wool trade was thriving in England, mainly due to the high demand for the wool in the making of cloth. However, when the English King Edward I returned to England from the Crusades, he needed extra money to pay for his military expeditions, so he introduced new wool taxes, also known as the Great Custom. The master and dame in the rhyme likely represent the nobility who are taking a portion of the wool as taxes. When we look to the original ending, and none for the little boy who lives down the lane, the original intention makes more sense. This was changed to make for a more upbeat tale later on and the little boy was included in receiving the same portion. Black sheep were also considered bad luck because their fleeces, unable to be dyed, were less lucrative for the farmer. Join us soon for part two of Nursery Rhymes A Secret History, where we will look at more famous nursery rhymes including Little Jack Horner, Humpty Dumpty and Old Mother Hubbard. Thank you for listening.